Hello and welcome to this video on Metaphonius Junior. This is very much a very quick video, a sort of test setup and run video, where I just want to go through the setup of the Junior, uh, basically how it performs, how you, how you initialize it, do your leak test, set it up and then get going. So it can be a, a very short instructional video. And we'll just start with a little concept about the machine. So the Junior machine is a, is a flow generator, much the same as the Tophonius, uh, full Tophonius is a flow generator, and it's a volume cycled machine. So we're going to set a volume, we're going to put that volume in, and when that volume is delivered, it's going to then end inspiration. So a flow generator, a volume cycled machine. Um, <clears throat> very simple to use. The uh, requires two things. requires the mains electricity for the operation of the auxiliary system, what we call the auxiliary system, and we need a piped oxygen supply for the anaesthetic circuit. But to note that we don't need any oxygen to drive the, the bellows, because there's no bellows, we're using a piston assembly, um, which is unique to the Tophonius. And that piston is moving under the control of a motor, which is all part of the, the servo system for Tophonius. So we've got incoming uh, uh, mains pressure. I've got a little cylinder on this one. Got my uh, pressure gauge here. Here's uh, my circuit pressure, my manometer, and I've got mains coming in. So I'm just gonna start the machine and talk you through what happens when you start the machine. The machine is gonna start to do a number of tests as we, as we uh, after we push that button. So what we hear then, two beeps for OK, and one long beep for um, an error. And the error on that one is simply that the mains isn't actually connected at the moment. So uh, indication of what's going on. So the idea is that you would turn the machine, the machine on, go about your business, get your uh, syringes ready, get your ET tubes ready, but you can hear what the machine is doing and, and it will alarm, alarm you or alert you to a, a fault if there is one or, or just an alert, not necessarily a fault. So once it's gone through that initial self-test, we get to the point where the run stroke IPPV button is flashing and that's a, a, um, a request to then initialize the piston. Much as we saw with the full or Tophonius machine or you may see in another video, we need to take the piston to the bottom and then we do a zero and from that point on, on uh, for the use of this machine, we know exactly where that piston is. So I'm gonna push that, um, that button, but I must, before I do that, make sure that there's nothing on the end of the white piece so it's able to freely move down without developing any pressure. So I'm gonna push that button. So you may not be able to hear that on the, uh, <coughs> through the microphone because it's very, very quiet, but the piston's now going to the bottom. Once it gets to the bottom, it's gonna uh, reset itself. We're gonna get a beep, there we go. And now, um, we're gonna go into the leak test. I just jumped in there. It prompts you to do the leak test by pushing and holding any one of these four buttons. So it's always a good idea to do a leak test every time you use the machine, certainly on a, a start of day basis. And it's a very, very simple thing to do. Having gone into this screen, I'll read the screen to you as it's probably not visible from there. It says fit stopper to um, Y piece and then turn on the gas flow to test for leaks. So I'm gonna put this stopper onto the end. Okay, that's on the end. And then um, I'm gonna turn on the gas flow. So I've got my oxygen connected. I'm just gonna turn this up and look at my manometer gauge. I wanna come up to about 20 centimeters of pressure. Once it's past that point, I'm gonna turn it off. And then we should see that the, the, um, the pressure's being held. And that's sat there very nicely at 20 centimeters of water. Now, if there was a leak, what I would do is I would turn this um, up. Say there's a one liter leak, I'd turn this, and if we got to one liter and it held the, the needle steady, then we'd know there was a one liter leak. Now, this machine's got a very, very tiny leak of about 150 mils because I pre-tested it earlier. So on a liter, we can actually see that this pressure is actually going up. So I'm over-delivering. If I turn that down, then it's it basically um, staying still. So once we've done the, the, the pressure test, we just push any one of these knobs, release the pressure, and then push the run button, and we're going to go straight into the um, phase where we can start using the machine. I push the run button, and now comes up with this um, auxiliary screen uh, where we're ready to go. Now I've got a couple of messages coming up there because uh, my mains isn't turned on, so I'm just going to make sure my mains is turned on. Now my mains has come back, and the other two messages says that the um, cylinder reserve is low. And that quite rightly is, because the piston, as we know, we took it right to the bottom, it's sat at the bottom, and it's got no gas. 
So all we simply do now, we leave the stopper on. If we've got a vaporizer fitted, we could put the vaporizer to three or four percent and pre-fill this with anesthetic uh, as your personal choice. We're really just going to add oxygen to the system. Oh, it looks like my oxygen cylinder has, has just... Um, There we go. So I'm going to put in oxygen in about five or six liters. And what you probably can't see on the screen, but the little auxiliary uh, piston here, the, the, the picture of the piston is now filling up as the cylinder fills up with your um, oxygen and your agent if you're putting your agent in. So we pre-fill to a level um, which we need to sort of predetermine in, in advance. So we have a concept now of something called buffer volume. Our patient may be, say we are, our patient is a 500 kilo horse and we're gonna have a nominal tidal volume of five liters. And we have a 20 liter capacity in this cylinder. So we could have the cylinder at the, at the top, we've got full 20 liters below it and we could go 20 down to 15, back to 20, delivering five liters tidal volume, but actually within a, a, a big circuit volume. So we have this concept of something called a buffer volume. And the buffer volume is on top of the tidal volume. So if I set a buffer volume of say five liters and our tidal volume was five liters, the combined would be 10 liters. And it would mean that the machine would then restrict the movement of the piston so that it can only come up to 10 liters and we'd never have any, any more than 10 liters in the system. Um, if it tried to add gas on top of a 10 liter system, then it would then come out of the electronic dump valve and be wasted much like it would out of an APL or spill valve. So this buffer volume concept is part of how we set the machine up. So I'm gonna set the tidal volume to five on this one. I turn this to five and then having turned it, I need to just commit it by pressing the button. Now it's committed. My inspiratory time I'm gonna to set to two seconds for my horse. I'm just gonna set that to two set that and my respiratory rate um, I'm going to set that at eight and it was ten I'm just going to drop it to eight now I've got my machine set up for tidal volume respiratory rate inspiratory time and I've got a maximum working pressure limit here as well which means that if the pressure gets to this value it will stop the inspiratory phase and open the, the release valve so the pressure is dissipated I tend to set this about 10 centimeters above my predicted uh, peak inspiratory pressure. My, my pip in this case in a horse probably going to be 20 to 25. I'm going to set this at 35 and leave it there. Uh, it's just on 35 now. I'm just going to make sure that's committed. Okay, so it's now um, set. So all my, all my uh, values are set there. One thing that we've discussed but I haven't set is my buffer volume. So to set your buffer volume, push and hold this button until the TV changes to say BV. Now it's on buffer volume. I'm going to set that to 10. And then if I leave it, it'll go back to tidal volume. And, and why 10? The reason for setting for 10 is I'm setting it initially for twice the tidal volume of my patient. In the expectation is uh, that my patient once induced, laid on the table, put on its back, the mayor appeared out near, and then it will go <gasps> and take a big breath, which is normally in excess, well in excess of its normal tidal volume. Equally, uh, or equal at least to twice the total volume. And just to be sure, I want it to be equal to twice the total volume. So I put 15 uh, liters there, so we've got plenty of uh, room for a big breath. It's not gonna run out of gas in the cylinder. It's not gonna uh, get to the bottom of the cylinder, which would then open the, um, the escape valve and let air come in. That would dilute our system. So 15 liters to start with. Once the patient's uh, asleep and controlled uh, ventilation, I very much, very likely to come in, go into my buffer volume again, and drop that down to maybe four liters. So then I've got nine liters of um, circuit volume in the piston, and it's only going from nine to four, nine to four, nine to four, and it keeps the circuit tight. Okay, so um, having done that, we set our, uh, we pre-fill to our, um, our buffer volume. The machine knows the combination of the tidal volume and the buffer volume. So it's gonna fill this system up. I'm just gonna speed this up by putting some gas in. 
Okay, so what we see is now when it gets to the 15 litre mark, which is my five of my tidal volume plus my 10 of my buffer volume. When it gets to 15, it's opening that relief spill valve and letting the gas go out. So I'll just turn that off. And now the machine is prepped, full of anaesthetic, full of oxygen, ready to go. And one of the nice things to, to know about this system is that because it's a servo system based on pressure, there's absolutely no problem with me doing this. There's no pressure in there. The, the gas isn't going to escape. It's just going to sit there waiting uh, for connection. So whether the stop is on or not, doesn't matter. I'm going to keep that on. And when my horse comes along, I'm going to just disconnect that, connect to the horse, and the animal will be able to breathe spontaneously immediately, or we can go straight into ventilation. So just going to set this up, and then I'm going to set this running with a, uh, with a, with a simulator so we can see the workings of the machine uh, with a simulator. Okay, so we're ready to start ventilating. <clears throat> I've got my uh, patient simulator connected. It's just a, a bellows contraction to uh, accept the volume that's being delivered. It's probably going to um, sort of result in slightly lower pressures than we'd expect with a real animal, uh, but it'll certainly uh, show the principle here. Uh, so I'm gonna set my tidal volume to my five liters. I've got my respiratory rate at eight, my IT at two, and my maximum working pressure at 35. Just keep an eye on this little manometer here. I'm gonna press the run button and off we go. So we see on the screen that the piston is descending and we see the, the pressure on the manometer here. And we get into about 10 or 11 uh, centimeters of water pressure. On the screen, uh, may not be uh, immediately obvious, but in brackets above all of these um, uh, values are the measured values for what we're delivering. So in the, above the MWPL, we see it's going up to nine or 10 centimeters. The IT time is being measured at two, which is what we'd expect. The respiratory rates uh, being measured here at 7.9, and we've got a set at eight, so uh, that's a calculation um, rounding. And then we've got the tidal volume was 4,967, so um, it's actually measuring the, the delivered volume as well. So this is information that it does during ventilation, but it equally do it during uh, spontaneous breathing. So if your animal is spontaneously breathing, these values will be appearing, and if your 500 kilogram horse is ventilating at two and a half liters, then you know that really there's a, there's a degree of hyperventilation there and maybe um, additional support is needed and uh, switch to uh, manual ventilation. And that's it, very simply. It's very easy to go between um, spontaneous, for now in spontaneous mode, I'll come out of the run mode and the animal can just breathe very easily. Um, there's no resistance to breathing because of the servo system. I want to go back to ventilating, hit the, the ventilate button. If you want to do something like a sigh, it's very easy, stop. Put this to maybe eight liters. Do one breath at eight liters. Come back. Set this back to five liters. And then carry on. And similarly, what we could have done with that side breath, we could have delivered that, that seven or eight liters um, in a longer time, just to aid with the opening of the, of the alveoli. So a very, very simple thing to use. Um, a couple of little features I just want to make you aware of. We've got the add a litre uh, feature here. Basically, if the piston gets right down to less than one and a half litres in the, on the bottom of the, the cylinder, it will automatically add through the vaporizer uh, one litre of gas, just so that if there's a, a small leak in the system around the ET tube, we're not constantly fiddling with the oxygen flow meter to try and compensate for that. So that's done automatically. We have PEEP and CPAP function, very, very simple to use. We press the CPAP button. Uh, the MWPL changes to say CPAP. We set that to, to say nine or 10, commit it. It then develops a level of CPAP and holds it there. And the animal can spontaneously breathe um, with that CPAP at present. As soon as we go to ventilate, that CPAP becomes a peak value. So um, that makes it very easy. So I can just hit the run button. We've now got ventilation on top of PEEP. And to stop it, stop ventilation and put my CPAP back to zero. And the last one here is assist mode. I'm not really gonna go into assist mode. That's handled uh, um, very well in other videos. But just to let you know that there's an assist feature on here. If the animal is making attempts to breathe, we can tune in with that. It's a, um, it's a flow triggered uh, system. It looks for a certain flow and if that flow is present, uh, suggesting inspiration for effort from the patient, it'll augment that flow and deliver the, the tidal volume. 
I think that covers the, the main features of the, the Tophonius machine. That goes through the, the initial setup, the checks, the leak checks, and um, setting the machine and running into mechanical ventilation. Thank you for watching.